Ray, I've always pondered just why lighter people are faster than me up climbs and heavier ones are a little bit slower. Is there, is there actually a formula that can predict the results of a hill climb stage? There is a formula and it's a bit difficult to describe how it works because things are a bit nebulous <laughs> and you've got everything that's changing and being different. But I remember that film when you went up the hill and the girl beat you. Oh, now, she beat me by, by loads, yeah. Okay, right, well, she weighed 55 kilos. Yeah. And we'll say you weigh 90 on a good day. If you're being kind, yeah. If I'm being kind. Yeah. And the problem is, the heavier you weigh, the harder it is. And if it's an e-bike, that motor's got to work harder to help you push yourself up the hill. And I guess that, that motor's then going to be using more watts, isn't it? It certainly is, and that means less time in the saddle under power. Yeah. So it's a very important thing, really. Yeah. And weight does make a difference. Yeah. Oh. So, so what, I want to, what I want to know is, is there a formula to predict the, the speed differential and also the amount of watts used on a climb? There is. And if we go up to the workshop, and we look at the rolling road, put he, a bike on. And Ray just so happens to have a rolling road. <laughs> so I should. <laughs> yeah. We can find out exactly what's going on right. and we can draw a graph. And when we can see exactly what's going on for that bike okay. and that rider weight. Fantastic. So we're going to get some accurate data. We can. On, on this very scenario. Heavy rider versus light rider, rolling road. On the rolling road, held down at the front so it doesn't wobble. Got the battery, cadence drive, the motor on the bike here, which is going to do all the stuff. And round here is where I like to be at the control panel. First of all, press the button, get the rams down, hold the bike down, we are ready to roll. So, Ray, the basis of our test today is weight. How are you going to simulate the weight on the rolling road? We're going to use air rams. These are going to pull down the bike we'll work out how much we've got to pull them down by, how many kilograms, we do a calculation for that. And then when we're ready to roll, we just put the air amps down and there we go with the kilograms that we want. So we've got a 70 kilogram rider here. And a 90 later. Absolutely. Wow, Ray, and the tool for the job today is the mule. The good old mule, eh? Absolutely. My Pride and joy. Yeah. This is Molly, I think. Okay. <laughs> so now the reason this bike is a direct drive. It's got a 500 watt hour battery. Uh, and tell us a bit more of the details of the bike. It's got a thousand watt motor and we've had it taking 1460 watts. It's efficient, pretty good. It's easy to use. There's no gears inside it. And uh, for the setup, we've got a power monitor here that tells us everything about what is happening as far as the battery is concerned. And we can use this device, the cadence drive, to do certain things. We've got the rollers underneath, so we can actually drive the bike with the rollers, drive the bike with the cadence if we want to, or both at the same time. And more than that, we can put the power on using the throttle, and we can see how much power is going down onto the rolling road. And once we've done that, we've got all points covered. During the India World Series, we've seen that it's the lighter riders that are winning the power stage sections. Even top three finisher Jose Borges thinks that lighter contemporaries are unassailable on the climbs. Myself and specialised George Leslie have seen this too on the numerous head-to-head -head climbs we've done over the years. My 90 kilos getting seemingly nowhere against her 50 kilos. And out on a monster tour of the Mont Blanc Massive, I was continually blown away by how the super light, and I guess super fast, could pass me on climbs where I was tapped out in turbo. More than this, it's simply the fact that range is so much more for lighter riders, as I found out with Fabrice on some punishing Cormayeur climbs. But back to the rolling road, I wanted to find out with Ray what the actual difference is. Can we measure it? Is there a formula that we can use to predetermine what the results might look like on a hill stage? Can we get some actual data on how many watts more a heavier rider needs? Can we get some data on how much faster a lighter rider is? Well, it seems we can. It sounds to me, Ray, that we're ready to roll and get the first uh, simulation done. Well, we're going to start with the lighter rider. We are. We're going to start with the 70 kilo rider first of all. So the rams are set up to pull down the equivalent of 70 kilos. There's two rams on one one side and one the other side to balance the bike. 
and then we're going to get the throttle going and we're going to go for a spin. How much of a spin are we going to go for? We'll probably go up to 30 kilometres an hour. That will give us a coverage over the 25 standard. And distance? Distance, well, we can be here for an hour if you like, <laughs> but I think we may, maybe four or five minutes will do us for this one. Yeah. And we'll be able to read out from here and from the watt meter on the bike what's coming out of the battery, yeah. going into the back wheel and going down onto the track. Yeah. And then with that information, we'll do exactly the same again, but we'll put another 10 kilos on both sides, yeah. pulling up to 90. Yeah. And that we will look at the te test results again and we'll compare them and then we'll draw a graph and we'll be able to see what the difference is. So Ray, what we're going to be looking for is the time difference and also folks, the wattage difference, how much watts uh, each of us is drawing out of the bike. Absolutely, that's exactly what we'll do. Yeah, right, okay, here we go then. And I'm putting the weight on the bike now. You can hear it drop down, and up we go. 15 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour. 25 miles an hour. And we'll release the pressure now. The rider's got off the bike. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. We're gonna run the second test for the heavier rider. So off we go. Yeah. So we've now got Jones weight on the machine, right? Absolutely. And we put the load on. Can the machine take that load? And we're just checking this now. The computer's just taking the information. Can it handle it? <laughs> there we go. Second test completed. So now we can look at the figures on the graph. Here's the graph and we are plotting velocity increasing against power increasing. This line at the bottom, 90 kilo rider on a direct drive bike. Up above it, 70 kilo rider, that's me, on a direct drive bike. We can see how I can benefit much more in the fact that I can go faster with the same power or I can go further with the same power. Okay, Ray, let's go into the bottom part of the graph, but I think it's worth pointing out, isn't it, that we're actually on, uh, not on a mid-drive bike, on a direct drive bike, which isn't restricted, but there's a reason for that, isn't there? The, there's a reason because you really want to see how much power is used further up the scale. And on the rolling road, we're able to do that. And so what we're looking at is more information than you normally would have. But at the bottom, at 20 kilometers an hour, I would be using 24, less, 24 watts less than Steve, or if I use the same power, I'd be going three kilometers an hour faster. Not very much, but still a little more. Okay, Ray, let's now move to the middle part of the graph. We're doing, what are we doing, about 30, 40 kilometers an hour, right? Yes, that's right, 30, 35 kilometers yeah. an hour. And this is where I'm doing even better. That's where the lighter guy has the advantage. Here, I'm using 55 watts less to do the same speed. Or I can use the same power and go five kilometers an hour faster. And this is in the area where we're really going to make a difference. So you can see, if you're lighter, you're faster. Simple as that, basically, isn't it? Ray, I find this massively interesting it actually just uh qualifies what i've always felt but you've now actually got real you know the real data the real facts on the ground here i think folks it's worth mentioning that uh we've done this on the rolling road because it's a control environment there's no wind there's no uh, uneven gradient so obviously when you get into the real world things might be a little bit different that's but right all things being equal this is the facts right in the real world if we're out on a ride together how many watts less are you going to use how much faster you're going to be than me give me yeah. some numbers on it i can go the same distance as you but i can do it about five kilometers an hour faster right and that's with the same size battery yeah being lighter i can go further probably about 10 percent further and i can also go faster over the same distance so my battery will effectively appear to last longer 
or my bike will effectively be faster. And that is an advantage for a lighter person and there's no getting away with it. Weight does slow things down. Well, Ray, as the rolling road rolls to halt, some very interesting facts there. Now, I know, uh, folks, you know, we have been using the direct drive bike uh, in this test, but uh, we will be using more bikes, won't we, Ray? Absolutely. The reason we've used the direct drive is it's very simple. There's no gears in it, uh, very little. It drives straight on the wheel and off you go. And it's pretty zippy, but that gives us a jolly good range. And it's a powerful motor. So it's an easy thing for us to demonstrate what's going on, but we need to look at a geared hub, one with an epicyclic gear in, that will take a little more energy to work the gears, and then move on the to mid a mid-motored bike, your favorite. Now, Ray uh, isn't a big fan of the mid-motored bikes, but we won't go into that discussion, but nevertheless, e-bike racing is a big thing worldwide, so ride weight you know, will play a part in that. So maybe sometime in the future, we might see races with handicaps on them based on rider weight and also motor, which is something we will also be looking at in the future. Uh, Ray, uh, something you mentioned actually was tire de uh, deformation is, is an important part with increased weight, right? Absolutely. And it's tires getting hot and wherever heat is generated, that's energy wasted. So if you have a tight chain, it'll get hot, heat being thrown away, and as we said, with the tires deformed by the heavier weight, yeah. they get warm and that's uh, another thing. The battery, of course, the more power it gives out, the warmer it can get and the motor the same. So everything is running against you when you pile on the pounds. <laughs> So there you go, folks. I hope uh, you found it interesting. Uh, amazing work there, Ray, to get some, you know, I've always wanted that data. So if you're out for a ride with your mate who's 50 kilos, maybe encourage them to ride in a lesser power mode. Get them to ride in eco while you ride in trail. Uh, and let's see your thoughts. Uh, any comments uh, about some of the data we've got here? I think there's no end of things we can do on this magnificent machine that Ray has built from scratch. And uh, it's, it's mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing. Ray, thanks so much. No problem. Pleasure.